There are many different kinds of rocket propellants, all with their own advantages and disadvantages. From the cryogenic to the hypergolic, the corrosive to the explosive, we cover them all in our rocket propellants tier list. But first, some common misconceptions about rocket propellants. Most propellants aren't just one chemical, but rather they are composed of a fuel and an oxidizer. The fuel and oxidizer are kept in separate tanks and then mixed in the combustion chamber and then ignited. Notice how I say most propellants. There are examples of rockets that use only one propellant and still others that use three propellants. Also, the main reason propellant choice is so important is because engine efficiency is mostly determined by propellant choice. Of course, some engines are better optimized for fuel efficiency than others, but something like a hydrogen peroxide engine will never be as efficient as a methane plus oxygen engine. Also, please remember to like and subscribe. I only have 28 subscribers, so it would help out a lot if you did. Now let's get into it. First up in C tier, we have hydrogen peroxide. This is a monopropellant, meaning it is only one propellant. Hydrogen peroxide, however, doesn't just explode by itself. Oftentimes, in a hydrogen peroxide rocket engine, a catalyst is used to ignite the propellant. The main advantage of hydrogen peroxide is the fact that rocket engines using that use hydrogen peroxide don't need to be very complicated. They don't have to worry about mixing the fuel and oxidizer, and don't need complex ignition system. This makes hydrogen peroxide a very effective fuel for reaction control thrusters where simplicity and reliability are of utmost importance. Hydrogen's main drawback is fuel efficiency. Hydrogen peroxide engines are very inefficient, with specific impulses around 150 seconds. Next up in B tier, we have unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. Try saying those five times fast. These propellants are hypergolic, meaning they explode immediately upon touching each other. This means that rockets that use UDMH and N204 don't need heavy ignition systems. UDMH stands for unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and N204 is the chemical formula for nitrogen tetroxide. U UDMH and N204 have very similar uses to hydrogen peroxide, often being used for reaction control thrusters. However, due to the higher specific impulse of UDMH and N204, it is also a viable propellant for a main propulsion system, and can be seen on rockets like China's Long March 2F. The main drawback of this bipropellant is the fact that the fuel, UDMH, is very toxic, carcinogenic, and can cause considerable environmental damage. However, unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide are no doubt very useful propellants. First up in A tier, we have RP-1 plus liquid oxygen. RP-1 is a highly refined, rocket-grade kerosene, and is commonly seen in many rockets, including the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and the first stage of the Saturn V. RP-1 has many advantages. First of all, it is easy to store, being dense and not needing very cold temperatures. However, the oxidizer, liquid oxygen, does require very cold temperatures, or else it will evaporate, but it is, it is also very dense. Also, this propellant is much more efficient than others mentioned on this list, with a maximum theoretical specific impulse of 289 seconds at sea level. There aren't many major drawbacks to this propellant combination, it's simply mediocre. Next up, we have methane plus LOX. Also, quick side note, LOX is short for liquid oxygen. So far, this has only been really used by SpaceX for their next generation Raptor engine. It is slightly more efficient than RP-1 plus LOX, which is definitely a bonus, but its real major advantage is its clean burning. RP-1 plus LOX creates tons of soot inside the engine, which means that if you attempt to reuse such an engine, you have to refurbish it before using it again. However, methane burns very clean, which means that if you reuse a methane LOX engine, you don't have to do as much refurbishment. This is great for SpaceX, where reusability is their number one goal. However, methane is a lot less dense than RP-1, and requires much cooler temperatures to store it properly. This makes building a methane LOX-powered rocket much harder. And finally, our S-tier rocket propellant, liquid hydrogen plus liquid oxygen. Hydrogen plus liquid oxygen is one of the most common rocket propellants, and for good reason. This propellant combination yields the highest maximum theoretical specific impulse of any propellant currently used, at a whopping 385 seconds at sea level. Some hydrogen LOX engines can reach 450 seconds of specific impulse in a vacuum. 
These ludicrous numbers are very enticing, but there are some huge engineering hurdles to overcome in order to be able to use hydrogen plus LOX, namely the fact that it requires very cold temperatures in order to be able to store it as a liquid. Liquid hydrogen has to be stored at negative 252 degrees Celsius in order to stay a liquid. On top of that, liquid hydrogen has an incredibly low density, making it hard to use for a rocket. Nevertheless, hydrogen plus LOX can be seen on a number of rockets, on the Saturn V second and third stages, and on the main propulsion for the space shuttle. This propellant is certainly deserving of our top spot on our rocket propellant tier list. Thanks for watching to the end. Please like and subscribe, and make sure to watch another video. Goodbye!